introduction, this is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at forward contract as a hedging instrument. This topic is covered in advanced accounting, it's covered in international accounting, and it's covered on the CPA exam, the FAR section. If you want additional lectures, please visit my website or visit my YouTube channel. Now, I would like to always connect with my viewers. I'd like to know them even on a personal level. You could subscribe to my channel on YouTube. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm very, very active on LinkedIn. You can like you can like my Facebook page, Accounting Lectures, or you can connect with me on Twitter. So let's go ahead and get started about the hedging foreign exchange rate. As we saw in the prior session, if you viewed the prior session, what we established, we established the fact that if you are involved in foreign currency transaction, if you buy or sell in a foreign currency, as a result, what's going to happen is this. You're going to have a risk. And what is that risk? The risk is the currency could work against you. The foreign currency position could work against you and you could have a substantial loss. But also you could have a reward where the currency works to your favor and you could have a gain. Well, guess what? You're not in the business of playing the foreign exchange rate risk. You're, you're not interested in the risk. You're not interested in the rewards. Sp specifically, you're not interested in the risk. And you don't care about the reward because you're not in the business of of uh, of trading foreign currency. So what you do, you're going to use hedging techniques. You're going to be hedging foreign exchange risk. Now, how do you hedge foreign exchange risk? You will use something called derivative instrument. Now, what is a derivative instrument? Well, basically, a derivative instrument is a financial instrument. Basically, it's a contract that provides the holder Okay, or the right, or if you, you can buy it or you can write it with the right or the obligation to participate in some or all of the price changes of another underlying value of measures that does not require the holder to own or deliver the underlying value of measure. This is a long statement for what? Well, for one thing, I need to tell you that you could have der der derivatives instrument not only for foreign currency transaction. This is only one thing. You could have der derivatives instrument for many other financial assets such as stocks, bonds, gold, real estate. So you could have deriv derivatives instrument. And what are they really? What's going to happen is this. If the prices go up, you can participate in those prices increases. So that's what it gives you that option. Or if the prices goes down, you can protect yourself depending on what position you are on. Okay, and we will see how it works. But that's basically what it is. So you are basically taking a position to either uh, participate in the reward if the price goes up or protect yourself if the prices went down. Now, we have two types of derivatives instruments. We have forward-based contract and option-based. Basically, in, in a sense, they work the same in terms of protection, but they have a different purpose. The forward contract, in a forward contract, what's going to happen is this. You are looking to either buy a specific amount of foreign currency, if we're dealing with foreign currency, or sell a specific amount of foreign currency at a specific date. So for, forward base is when you will have a specific transaction and you would like to protect. Option based, it gives you the option within a period to either buy or sell the option. So basically, but option based is... I'm not, I'm not going to say it's speculative, but it's more speculative. What we're going to be interested in, actually, it is more speculative than forward base. Forward base, you're looking to protect a certain position, and this is what we're going to be working with in this chapter. Now, also, you could have a forward base for stocks, for bonds, for gold, and you could have options for stocks, bonds, or gold, but we are dealing with foreign currency in this situation. So derivatives are recognized in the balance sheet. So once you buy a derivative, it's recognized at the balance sheet at fair value, resulting in a payable position for one part party and the receivable position for another party. So when you buy a forward or when you buy an option, you could have a payable, you could have a receivable depending on what position you are on. And we would look at an example today. So what is a, what is a forward exchange contract or a forward contract? Because this is going to be the heart of this session. We're dealing with forward contract. A forward contract is an agreement to exchange currencies at, for two different countries as, a, as at a specified rate the forward rate on a stipulated future date. So basically, you know you need a certain amount of money in the future in a foreign currency. Why? Because you purchased from another country. You purchased goods and services from Germany and you need to pay them. Therefore, and you need to know, you're going to know when you need to pay them, the time. Therefore, you buy a forward contract to make sure you can pay them. Or you sold something, you sold goods to another company, to a German company, and they're going to pay you 
in euros and you want to convert those euros into US dollar but you want that amount to be guaranteed you don't want to play the exchange rate risk so basically an example will be something like this today you either bought bought or sold something and the spot rate which is the exchange rate today is 0.168 okay now what you would do you would say you know what the spot rate is 1.68 but I'm not interested in what's gonna happen 90 days from today why don't I buy a future a uh, forward rate at 0 0.75 where I where I can exchange my currency at 1.75 or I can exchange my currency if I want to depending if it's available forward rate at 0 0.162 if the forward rate is lower than the spot rate we said it's a, there's a discount if the forward rate is above the spot rate it's, so it's a premium depending on what you what you think is going to happen to the currency okay but basically the forward rate is different than the spot rate but you are guaranteed that rate okay because let's assume this is a 90 day contract okay so what's going to happen on that date the 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 spot rate could be 0.2 or the spot rate could be 0.1 it doesn't matter to you you're you are locked you are locked at that rate and that's what you want to do you want to lock yourself whether you are buying or what you are selling so what type of a forward contract to choose from you have forward contract used as a hedge and under hedging you could have four different options for example you could hedge a foreign currency a foreign currency transaction which we will see an example in this session you could have unrecognized firm commitment and what is unrecognized firm commitment this is when you enter into a contract to buy something in the future so you have a firm commitment firm commitment means you enter into a contract and that's it you're going to have to buy the item we call this a fair value hedge and we'll work an example later about fair value hedge and we have something called foreign currency denominated which is forecasted transaction here is you planned to buy something in the future so what you want to do is you want to protect your position this is called a cash flow hedge now why do we differentiate between b and c um, we're going to see that in B, any gains and losses goes into the income statement, which is the, it goes to earning, while in C, first it's going to go into OCI, then from OCI it's going to go into the income statement. So where do we have the gains and losses? Then net investment in foreign operation, we don't really cover this, but if you have an investment in a foreign operation, you made an investment, you could also hedge your position for that investment. Also, you could use forward contract for speculation. Speculation means gambling. Um, forward contract used to speculate changes in foreign currency. Here you're interested in the gain and the loss of the of the contract itself not you are not protecting anything you may not have something to protect you're just interested in basically you're going to the casino in a sense and the best way to illustrate this is to work an example to show you how this whole thing works so we have crystal exporting company is a use us wholesaler engaged in a foreign trade the following transaction is representative of its business dealing the company uses a periodic inventory system as an is on a calendar year basis so december 31st is year end all exchange rate are direct quotation that's fine December 1st. So here's what happened December 1st. Crystal Exporting purchased merchandise from Chang Limited, a Hong Kong manufacturer. So the first thing is we're going to have an accounts payable. Okay, why? Because we bought something from a Hong Kong manufacturer. The invoice was for 210,000 Hong Kong dollars. So we have to pay 210,000 on April 1st. Notice the transaction took place. We did not make a commitment. So notice here, we did not make a firm commitment. You're going to see what a firm commitment later. Here, what we did is we have a transaction. A transaction took place. Okay. On this date, Cristel Exporting acquired a forward contract to buy 210,000 Hong Kong dollar on April 1st for 0.1314. So we know we're going to need the money on April 1st. So what we did is we, we said, okay, let's just make sure we cover all our bases. What does that mean? It means let's go ahead and buy a forward contract at 1.1314 so let me show you what happened here 210,000 times 0 0.1314 27,594 you basically you basically locked yourself into paying this amount and you're going to see how later we're going to see the transaction but this is basically what you are going to be paying for those goods and services why because you bought a contract and you are guaranteed the price now here's some additional information we need to work through this okay to record the transaction okay on april 1st 
uh, Crystal Exporting submitted full payment and we already know how much the payment it's going to be after obtaining the 210,000 Hong Kong dollar on its forward contract. So it basically cashed out the investment. So here's the additional information. Spot and forward rate for the Hong Kong dollar were as follow. December 1st, this is the spot rate and this is the forward rate that they purchased. Remember, they purchased the forward rate on that date. So what happened on December 1st, we technically have two transactions on December 1st. First, the transaction for the purchase and the transaction for the hedge. So basically, it's, it's it, it, what we have to think about this is you have two transactions. What do I mean by you have two transactions? Let me, let me show you the two transactions. One is you have to, you have to record the purchase. And what's the purchase? The purchase is 210,000 uh, worth of goods from a Hong Kong company. The spot rate, you record that at the spot rate, and the spot rate is 0.1265. Therefore, you have an account payable of 26,565. So this is one transaction. So what you do now is you put your, you debited your purchases, and you credited your accounts payable and you credit your accounts payable based on the spot rate because this is what the spot rate you need to record the transaction today on that same date you're going to enter into another transaction now you're going to be hedging your position hedging means you want to guarantee the price you're going to you're gonna, you are going to pay for those hong kong dollars what you do is you purchase a forward contract and as i told you the forward contract the forward rate is 1.314 and someone told you I will sell you the Hong Kong dollar at 1.1314 so your commitment is 27,594 so what you do is you debit a forward contract receivable from exchange dealer which is basically this is an asset at 27,594 and you credit dollar payables to exchange dealer and you have a payable to the dealer you're going to have to pay the dealer 27,594 because they promised they will sell you that currency um at that date at that date so you have a, you have an asset and you have a liability now let me tell you this and i want you to uh, write this number down Remember, you are committed for 27,594, but today your payable is worth 26,565. So if you find the difference between those two, basically you are willing to pay $1,029 more than what you would pay today. Now, why are you paying this extra? Because you want to have a peace of mind. You want to wake up April 1st and not knowing that the Hong Kong dollar is went to, you know, 0.2 or 0.4 okay point two or point four where you have to pay a lot you're saying you know what i'm gonna just lock in my gain okay so remember this number here thousand twenty nine and you're gonna see you're gonna see it later okay so this is what you did you protected yourself by entering into this contract now what i suggest you do is this so here's what we're gonna do what i want you to do is um on, uh, create T accounts and those i want you to create those T accounts and start to plug in some numbers because I want you to follow this in a T account transaction because T account should help students. So we have an account payable of 26,565. We have a forward contract receivable of 27,594 and we have a payable of 20, 27,594. Now here's what I want you to know. Basically we have we are hedging something. What are we hedging? We are hedging our accounts payable. So this is the item that's being hedged. The payable is the item that's being hedged. And the forward contract receivable is the hedge itself. This is the hedging. We are, we, we, we hedge the position with the forward contract. Okay. So the accounts payable is what's being hedged. Now what's going to happen is we're going to have to keep track, keep track in a sense of a market value. We have to keep track of the fluctuation in both the payable as well as the forward contract. Okay, now let's for fast forward till December 31st. December 31st, the spot rate, if you go back and look at the problem, the spot rate equal to 0.1259. The spot rate equal to 0.1259. The spot rate was, the spot rate was, when, when I entered the transaction was, one uh, uh, on uh, December 1st, it was 0.1265. So December 1st was 0.1265. Now it's 0.1259. So what does that mean? It means right now when I adjust my payable, if I take 210,000 times 0.1259, 0.1259, I will find out that my payable should be adjusted to 26,439. So let's go ahead and 
process the tra this, this transaction. 210 times the spot rate as December 31st. This is my payable. My payable should be 26,439. My payable is 26,565. Well, my payable went down. I have a gain. Therefore, I debit accounts payable. $126, I'm gonna reduce my payable, and I'm gonna have a gain on the item being hedged. This is the item being hedged. I have a gain on the payable. So let me go ahead and update my books. So let me show you what's gonna happen. So on my for my payable, I debit the payable 126. Now my payable equal to 126,565 minus the debit. My payable equal to 26,439, and I credit again. 126. So that's good news. Basically, um, the the uh, the spot rate worked to my favor. Why? Because the the uh, the uh, the rate went down. As a result, I have less of a liability. I have less of a liability of 126. Now I have another adjustment to make. Remember, I have to adjust the item being hedged, and I have to also adjust my uh, hedge, which is the foreign foreign currency contract. Let's go back to the rates. So just in case you're wondering where I came up with all these rates, this is where I came up with all these rates. Okay, so this is the point one five nine. So I figure I, I I'm done with my spot rate. Now I have to adjust my forward contract. When I enter into this contract, I bought the forward contract at point one three one four. Ah well, guess what? Too bad. If I waited till December, I could have bought the contract at point one three zero eight. I could have bought the contract at one at point one three zero eight. Therefore, my contract went down in value. How much did it go down in value? Well, now I can buy it for that much. So it's it's point one three one four point one three one four minus point one three zero eight. If I waited, I could have save 0 0.006 if I bought that contract on December 31st I have 210,000 oh 126 hmm interesting so I have a, I have a loss of 126 well does this number sounds familiar yes I had a gain on the payable of 126 if you remember I had a gain on the payable of 126 right but what's going to happen since I have the opposite position because I, I bought the forward contract if I have a gain here I'm going to have a loss on the on the on the uh, on the on the on the position. So, if I take two hundred and ten thousand times the forward rate, so I should have a payable now, um, in U.S. dollar of of uh, twenty seven thousand four sixty eight. I'm sorry, this should be my uh, this should be my receive forward contract. My forward contract receivable should be twenty seven thousand twenty seven thousand four sixty eight, but my forward contract receivable is recorded at 27,594. Okay, so this is a this is a mistake. It's a forward contract receivable that we are adjusting. Therefore, I, I have a loss of 126. Therefore, what I have to do, I have to reduce my receivable by 126. Therefore, I debit the loss and I credit my receivable. Forward contract receivable is credited 126. And don't be surprised if I have a gain of 26 and a loss of 26. That's the whole purpose of the contract the whole purpose of the contract is to offset the losses offset the losses and offset the losses in this situation i have a gain well the loss will offset the gain so i'm neutral basically all in all i'm neutral now if i did not buy the contract i would have had a gain of 126 but i'm not interested in the gain okay i don't want to take that chance so th think about it as of december 31st the company was better off not buying the hedging contract because they had a gain notice they had a gain but they bought the but because they bought the forward contract, they incur a loss. But they're okay with this, okay? Be why? Because they're thinking about April first. That's what they're thinking about. They don't know what's going to happen on April first. Therefore, on that date, I credit my receivable one twenty six. Now the balance in my receivable is twenty seven thousand four sixty eight, and I have I debit a loss of one twenty six. I debit a loss of one twenty six. Notice. I am not going to touch this. This is I don't touch this till the end because this is basically a fixed figure. So this is basically this dollar payable to exchange dealer. This is what how much I have to pay. You don't adjust this when you have a payable. You don't adjust this. Listen to me when you have a payable. Okay? When you have a payable, you don't adjust this because you locked in the payment of 27,594. 
Now let's fast forward till April 1st. On April 1st, the spot rate is 0.1430. That's the spot rate. And you are responsible for 210,000 Hong Kong dollars. So 210,000 times 0.1430, your payable should be now $30,030. Now it worked against you. The payable worked against you because the rate went up and you thought as of December 31st, you are responsible for 26,439. So the first thing you do is you prepare an adjustment to adjust your payable, the item that's being hedged. So you have a loss of 3,591. Bad news, debit a loss, credit the payable. So let's go ahead and update the transaction on the Excel sheet. On the Excel sheet, what I would do, I will debit a loss. I have a loss of 3,591 and I will credit my payable. I credit my payable 3,591, 91. And this is my final balance. Okay, this is a balance. This was a balance before. And this is my final balance. And my final balance for the payable is 30,030. 30030 dollars now my initial when i first started this this was december 1st when i started this i thought i'm only responsible for 26565 but based on the spot rate i would have been responsible for 30030 dollars this is the bad news this is the bad news for me but what's the good news i don't care why because the good news is i hedged my position i hedged my position that's the purpose of the hedge now let's take a look to see what happened to the hedging position my hedge went up in value. Here's, here's what happened. On April 1st, I have a contract. Remember, I have a contract. And the uh, spot rate is 0 0.1430. Now, the spot rate and the forward rate will equal to each other on that date. Therefore, my foreign currency contract should be worth $30,030. So what does that mean? My forward contract rate was worth as of December 31st, 27468 Therefore, my asset's going to go up by $2,562. I debit my receivable and I credit my gain. Once again, the spot rate and the forward rate, they're equal to each other. Simply put, my forward rate and the spot rate are the same on that date. Okay, so now I debit my receivable, 25062 and I credit again. And now here is a, oh, thank God I... I enter into this contract okay so now let me update the transaction there so I'm gonna go ahead and update my accounts my my uh, now I have a gain let me just put the gain here I have a gain of three thousand five hundred and ninety one and my balance should be if I take those two together my balance should be oops give me one second here uh, it was 27,468 plus 3,591. 31,000. No, actually, my, my gain is only 2,562. 2,562. There we, there we go. It's 30,000. 30,000 and... $30. My payable is $30,030. Now I also have a gain. I have to book a gain of $2,562. Okay, because it's I, I debit the receivable, credit the gain. Now, this is where the hedged played a role in helping me cover my, basically cover my risk. Okay, let's take a look at what's going to happen next. Now I have to settle the transaction. Now I did all the updates. Now I have to settle the transaction. How much am I responsible for paying? Well, let's see. I'm only responsible for paying 27594 Therefore, I credit my cash, 27594 Hold on a second. Where did, this, where did this number came from, 27594 Well, let's go back to the Excel sheet. I know I'm flipping back and forth, but I want to show you this. Remember, I told you I'm only responsible. This is in the green button right here. I'm only responsible for that. Therefore, I only got, I'm, I'm only going to pay... 27,594 regardless of the payable. Why? Because I enter into this contract that gave me that amount, that gave me this payable amount, that fixed amount. Let's go back to the, so let me, I'm gonna debit this now because I'm gonna pay it 27,594. I'm gonna pay it, now my balance is zero. So let me just kind of 
take this account out so once I make the payment once I make the payment basically this account is basically gone this account is basically gone okay this account is gone this account is gone let me go back so I want you to follow here so I debited I credited my cash debited my payable now also what I have to do I am going to replace my forward contract receivable with an investment because this is what I actually bought I bought an investment so I'm gonna exchange I'm gonna remove my forward contract receivable this amount and place it into an investment account then I'm gonna take the investment account and remove it against my payable now you might be saying why don't we just instead of the second entry debit the accounts payable that's fine too as long as your professor is okay with it so simply put this entry is not needed what you do is you remove the payable and the receivable against each other but we want you to see I want you to see how the transaction proceeded from the get-go so what we did we transfer first I transferred the foreign currency I transferred this amount to the investment basically I I, I cashed my thirty thousand and thirty dollars I cashed out my investment thirty thousand and thirty dollars okay and what happened this account is gone then I closed my accounts payable with my investment so I credit this and I debit the payable now this is zero gone and the investment is zero gone so basically all these accounts are gone and this is how I settled my transaction so all in all all in all all in all what happened is this let me go back and review this first let me show you what happened if I did not if I did not hedge this position so I'll show you the value of the hedging so if I did not value this position my accounts payable started at 26,565 by December 31st the currency moved into my favor and I had a gain I had a gain of 26 therefore my payable became 26,439 by April 1st the currency moved against me and I have I had a big loss of 3,591 3,000 3,591 my payable would have been thirty thousand and thirty dollars overall my loss would have been three thousand four hundred and sixty five comparing the beginning balance and the ending balance those two the beginning balance I'm gonna highlight the beginning balance and the ending balance my loss would have been my loss would have been three thousand four hundred and sixty five that's without the hedging now this is the value of the hedge I went I enter I enter I entered this into this contract and I said I am going to pay 27,594 and I bought a forward contract and that forward contract goes up and goes down in value and as it goes up and it goes down I gain on December 31st the forward contract moved against me and moved exactly against me the amount that the payable moved in favor okay so basically the gain that I had on the payable was cancelled by a loss well that's not good but hey that's I, I chose that that route because I want to protect my position I don't know what's gonna happen on April 1st on April 1st the forward contract the forward contract is inverse to the payable okay it may not be 100% inverse here it's not 100% but I know from the beginning I am going to have a net loss of 1029 I told you that but let, let's keep going so my forward contract went up in value by 2562 so this 2562 so the net increase is 2436 I had a loss 126 a gain of 2562 so the net increase I had a gain on the forward contract of 2436 I had the loss of the payable of 3465 remember what I told you I'm going to pay 1029 more than the initial contract remember when I started this position I said I am responsible for 26565 based on the spot rate and I told you I'm willing to pay a thousand twenty thousand twenty nine more to make sure I am protected to make sure I am protected and this is exactly what I did 1029 more as a result I end up paying 27,000 this is four nine six twenty seven thousand six twenty five ninety four five ninety four twenty seven thousand five ninety four and this is the amount what is this amount 27,594 this is the amount if you remember from that green 
right here this is the amount that I said I will pay 27,594 and my original balance was 26,565 so I was willing to accept to pay a little bit more rather than having a surprise on April 1st so this is the value of the hedge so simply put basically we had two things to keep track of we had the accounts payable to keep track of of changes in the accounts payable up and down and we had to keep track of the forward contract receivable keeping changes of it up and down now this was a liability example if we have an asset so rather than a liability here we were hedging a liability we could have an asset we could have an account receivable instead of a liability the concept is the same the concept is the same however when we have a receivable we enter into a contract to sell the foreign currency not to buy because when we receive the money when we receive the foreign currency we want to sell it so we are selling the foreign currency not buy the foreign currency so simply put if we, um, simply put what's going to happen if we go back to the excel sheet this will be the fixed amount and this is the amount that we change the value for this is the amount that change value if you have any questions any comments by all means email me if you're studying for your CPA exam study hard if you want additional lectures please visit my website and if you happen to visit the website please consider donating